I've shared with you that I practice DBT as a toolkit for helping me manage and navigate certain aspects of ASD. But recently I've added another tool to my belt and I'm very excited to share it with you. This tool has been a game changer for me as I practice and continue to work on self-improvement, specifically as it relates to my eating habits and my behavior and mindset around food and eating. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I listened to this podcast yesterday called Changing Unhealthy Habits of Eating, a conversation between Tara Brock and Judd Brewer, both of whom I am familiar with. This podcast was exceptionally helpful for me. It highlighted bringing awareness to our harmful or otherwise negative behaviors and the mindset that we have around food and eating and patterns of eating and how just bringing a simple uh, mindfulness practice of pausing and grounding yourself before you eat can vastly improve eating habits and mindset. This podcast, along with thousands of nature scapes, breath work, sleep and relaxation prompts, CBT tools, and guided meditations created by hundreds of the world's leading therapists and coaches can all be accessed on Aura, the award-winning app used by over 7 million people for sleep, mindfulness, and meditation. This app completely blew me away. This app really impressed me. And I know that Aura will change your life in the same way that it has mine. People tend to intellectualize meditation, and that can stand in the way of doing it or even attempting to begin doing it. Others want to begin a meditation practice, but they just aren't sure how or where to start. This is where Aura will help. I'm confident that if you try Aura, it'll completely change how you think about and approach your own meditation practice, whether you're a seasoned practitioner like myself or a total beginner. And I want us to do this together. So I'm inviting you to join me on a 30-day meditation challenge using Aura's content. Getting started costs you nothing. Sign up for free on Aura's website using my link below this video. And the first 500 of you to use my link will receive a free trial plus 25% off. This is an exclusive offer, kindly sponsored by Aura, just for my viewers. So please head on over to their site and don't wait. This is a gift of self-improvement that you can feel really good about doing for yourself. But just to give some background and context, uh, I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa around the age of 19. And although I've reached a point in my recovery where I can say, I'm hesitant to say that I have fully recovered because in my opinion, I believe that uh, recovery from mental illness such as this, although I've reached a point of weight restoration and I have um, been able to condition myself with a more balanced and even flexible mindset around food and eating, I am now tasked with maintenance for the rest of my life. This is arguably the most difficult part of recovery. It means that I have to sustain my maintenance and avoid relapse. So it's a simple task, but not so easy. Food is something with which we engage every single day, multiple times a day for the rest of our lives to sustain us. So it can get kind of complicated and tricky if you have, if you're like me and you have a past history of dysfunctional um, behavior around food. But I do think that whether or not you have a diagnosed or undiagnosed eating disorder, I think that it's probably safe to say that most of us humans, <laughs> it's probably a universal human condition that we perhaps have unhealthy uh, relationships and unhealthy quote unquote bad habits um, around food. Like anything else, recovery is not linear. Mine certainly hasn't been, but right now on this day, currently I'm doing fantastically. So let me share the two tips that I think might help some of you. I hope, I hope so. The first tip is 
to identify your emotions and let yourself feel. So I don't know about any of you, but for me, uh, one of the things I struggle with is emotional eating, turning to food to avoid feeling intense or negative emotions. It's usually not a happy <laughs> feeling. Uh, it's, it's usually intense negative emotions, rumination on negative thought patterns, and so on. But rather than turning to food to soothe me and comfort me, uh, I, want, I want to choose a healthy coping mechanism, right? Not a maladaptive one like emotional eating. So what's been really helping me is to identify my emotions. And this is where journaling comes in handy. So I get my journal out. Actually, my journal's always out. So I <laughs> bring my journal beside me and I will often have it there uh, nearby so that it's it's accessible to me and I don't have to even waste any time. I can write down my intense emotions and label them so I can get them out onto paper, make it tangible, and I can look at it. So that's really helpful, number one, is because it gets it out of my mind, quite literally, and onto a piece of paper where I can have a little bit of separation so I can start processing that emotion. And if it's an emotion that's tied to another person, for instance, what I find really helpful is I will often write a letter. I'll write the letter to the person. I won't give it to them, but I will write it out, unload it, offload it, and lighten my burden. And it clears this headspace for me in such a way that is it's an immediate release of that emotional baggage state. This, this is really a grounding uh, practice for me. So that's why I'm a, I'm a lifelong journaler. Um, so I suppose writing comes naturally to me. So that's what I do. That's been really helpful because um, food, as you've heard me say before, food is a state changer. If we misuse it and abuse it, it can bring uh, various levels of harm to us truly. So that's my first tip is to write down your emotions, uh, if you are an emotional eater like I am at times. <laughs> I think we all are, right? I mean, food is comforting. It's, it's soothing to the senses and it's pleasurable. It's a pleasurable experience. So once again, if we abuse that pleasure or indulge in it unduly, um, it can definitely become a pattern of self-harm and self-destruction. And my second tip is one that I have found help with um, the Aura app actually in helping me with this is to slow down. And I didn't realize when I started timing my meals, uh, when I started timing myself and recording the duration of my meals, it really came as a shock to me that I was finishing my meals in six minutes or eight minutes. And that, <laughs> Going back to my yoga teacher training, I remember they, not forced, but they allowed us, permitted us. <laughs> they had us eat our meals within 25 to 30 minutes. They really wanted us to focus on mindfulness around, well, everything, but especially around eating and digesting, really enjoying and savoring the food, the meal. I need to reconnect with that. And so I've been practicing just the simple task of slowing down. And I will often say out loud to myself before I start the meal, after I bless the food and express gratitude for the meal, I will say out loud, slow down, Jennifer. The food is not going anywhere. I can take my time and enjoy this. What a privilege this is. And I will chew my food mindfully so that I can facilitate healthy digestion, for instance. And then what I've been doing is I will put on a body scan, a really quick body scan, like three minute body scan on Aura, and I will follow that body scan when I'm done with my meal. And what I like to do is I like to visualize my food being digested. digested. So that might sound ridiculous, but I'm just sharing what I do exactly. I will close my eyes and I will follow along with the body scan on Aura and I will picture the food 
moving smoothly through my digestive tract and then the, uh, the nutrients being absorbed in my intestines and my cells and my organs and my whole being benefiting from this nourishment. And I've been practicing this um, faithfully, religiously um, for the past several weeks. And it's, it's been, like I said, it's been life changing for me. It really has been because having come this far in my recovery where my only task, and I don't want to diminish it by saying my only task, but really the primary task, I should say, in my recovery at this point is, of course, just maintaining it, sustaining myself at this healthy weight with a healthy mind and just avoiding relapse. I'm not a mental health care professional, so I cannot give any diagnostic advice, any prescriptive advice regarding treatment and that sort of thing but I can speak on my own personal experience. So if you have any questions or specific topics that you would like me to discuss in, in the future, then I am more than happy to do that for you. So please leave those in the comments below should you wish to leave a comment. And I would like to thank Aura once again for sponsoring me and for really supporting me on my journey to wellness and my continued uh, practice of meditation and mindfulness practice in my life. Thank you again to Aura. Uh, and everyone watching this, please join me on my 30-day meditation challenge, Met mindfulness meditation challenge. I would love for you to join me and we can do this together in solidarity. That's my invitation to you and I hope you will take me up on the offer. Um, this exclusive offer, once again, was just kindly extended to my viewers. I would love for us to do this together. One thing you hear me say all the time is that the day your practice begins is the day your progress begins. So don't wait another day and uh, access Aura using my link. I thank you as always for watching and thank you for spending some time with me today and sharing energy with me today. And I want to wish you the best of luck, the best of success, and good health.